This is an introduction to the high Lisp. Many people consider Lisp to be the most powerful programming language. Lisp is also considered to be the language of artificial intelligence, which makes it even more interesting. Hi is a Lisp written on top of the Python, in order to achieve superhuman coding powers and have a lot of fun in the process. Because it is seamlessly compatible with Python in both directions, you can use all the powers of Python libraries with elegance and features of Lisp, even macros, and you can use Hi in your Python projects. You can even use it with Django to create websites and applications with it. If you are a Lisper, you will enjoy using the great powers of Lisp in the wide world of Python's libraries. Or if you come from Python, you can learn Lisp much easier by using familiar Python's features. And if you're a beginner, you get to learn the two most awesome languages ever at the same time. In this tutorial, I want to tell you about the very basics of this language, to give you the general idea of how it works and looks like. And I will dive deeper into more advanced topics in my future videos. To install it, just type pip install hi. You can enter hi REPL by typing hi in your terminal. REPL stands for read eval print loop and it is similar to the interactive Python shell. You can also execute any file by typing hi and the path to the file after it. Of course, it is always better to use a good text editor to do your programming in and I recommend Emacs, which is powerful and amazing and perfect for Lisp because it itself is written in Lisp and it is a great part of the Lisp hackers culture. You can find a link to high mode for Emacs in the description. To write a hello world application, you just type print hello world in closing parentheses. Really simple. Lisp stands for list processing, which is why high programs consist of lists. Lists are just expressions enclosed in parentheses. For example, this is a list. First symbol in list is usually a function name and the rest are the arguments you are passing to the function. As you can guess, this expression sums the numbers 2 and 3 and returns 5. It may seem unusual to write it this way, instead of simply saying 2 plus 3. But once you get used to it, you realize that this is a very convenient feature. It is called a prefix notation. One of the advantages of this notation is that you can pass more than two arguments to the function. For example, here we are adding together three numbers. Lists can be nested, which means they can contain other lists. In this case, the inner lists are evaluated first, from left to right, and their values are passed to the function. For example, here we're first adding the numbers 8 and 4, which returns 12. Then we are subtracting 6 from 10, which returns 4. And finally, we divide 12 by 4, which returns 3. If you want to assign a value to the variable, you can use set v. Comments in hi begin with a semicolon. You would usually use four semicolons to comment at the beginning of the file, three semicolons to make a comment about following big block of code, two semicolons to comment on the code inside of the functions, and one semicolon to create a comment at the end of the line. It is very convenient, and clever text editor like Emacs will automatically indent everything for you properly, which is awesome. Because high programs consist of lists, it gives them numerous awesome advantages, like being able to write powerful macros, which is to create code that can write code. You'll understand what that means and why it is so amazing later. Now let's look at the basic separations on lists. When you put a quote in front of the list, it turns off the evaluation. For example, here, instead of computing the result of adding two numbers, it simply returns the list itself. That allows you to use lists as data. You can use car to access the first element of the list and CDR to access all the rest of the elements. By stringing them together, you could access any element in the list. To create lists, you can use cons. Cons combines two elements into a new list. In Lisp, the symbol nil represents an empty list. So if you want to create a list that contains only one element, you use cons to combine together this element and nil. If you want to create a list that contains several elements, you can use the list star function. It simply uses series of consists to combine all the elements together. The basic conditional operator in high is if. The first argument is a truth test. If it's true, the second argument will be evaluated if false the third. The third argument is optional, and if it isn't there, it will default to nil. In this example, we check if the number 5 is odd, and if it is, we print this is true. If you want to execute more than one statement, you can use the operator do. 
By the way, as you can notice, when code becomes more complex, it becomes impractical to try to follow and count the parentheses. Lisp hackers don't use parentheses to understand the code. Instead, they use indentation. Your text editor should be able to highlight the matching parentheses when needed and to automatically indent the code. That way, here you can easily tell that the first two print statements are inside of the do operator and will be executed together. To loop through list, you can use for that has a similar structure to for in Python and looks like so. To define a function in high, you use defn. First, you specify a name of the function, then you list its arguments and then follows its body. The function will return the result of evaluating its last expression. For example, here we create a function that raises a number to the power you specify. First, we use input to prompt the user to enter a number. Then we will assign the input to the variable. After that, we do the same thing for the power. And finally, we convert the variables into integers and pass them to the power function that computes the result. If you want to learn more about Hi, subscribe to watch my upcoming tutorials, where I will be going more in depth about Hi, Lisp, application development, and AI algorithms. You can ask any questions or suggest ideas for the future videos on our forum, and you can join our Google Plus community. Also visit the official Hi website, which contains tutorials and documentation. If you want to learn more about Lisp, I can recommend you two fantastic books, Unsee Common Lisp by Paul Graham and Land of Lisp. You can find all the links in the description. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Do you need to develop a great website or an application? I can help you to create an awesome online project or take the existing one to the next level. If you have an idea, I will implement it with an amazing design and powerful features. Or if you want to create something great but don't know where to start, I will give you solid advice and guide you through making a popular website or starting your own online business. Consultation is completely free, so if you are interested, just send me a message and say hi.